It's a dazzler. You're just going to love this. It smells good, too. It's a pretty neat design. It's, it's really kind of cool. It's just kind of fun to see. She gets so excited. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Randy, are you out here somewhere? Where are you? Captain, I, I told you to come up to... Where, where, oh, there you are. I'm just lurking behind this tree. <laughs> You're a tree lurker, aren't you? <laughs> Listen, we're in Poland, Maine today. Can you believe it? You know, Maine has more towns named after foreign countries than any state in the Union. Wow. Yeah. Did not know that. Uh, I, I might have just made that up. This wonderful, bucolic, quiet setting that we have here today. But you won't believe what we found beside the road today. This is a, uh, a new a new unique find for us. You know how we, we, we've, we've found boats with one mast? We find a lot of those. Yep. And we found boats with two masts, right? Yep. And then we found, would you believe, three masts? Yes. What was that? That was a big schooner, An expedition right? schooner, yeah. Big expedition schooner. And then we found a boat with one keel. Yep. And then we found boats with kind of a half keel with a centerboard that would fall down. Yep. I have found today, for you only and our viewers, a boat with three keels. <laughs> Do they charge you for the extra No, keel? no, 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 no. It's all rolled into one incredible price. It's a dazzler. You're just going to love this. Through the trees, you will find a 28-foot Colvett Sea Roamer. Uh, this was built in England in 1969. In England, uh, for the most part, I think, I don't know if it's entirely England, but for a good percentage of it, the tides run about 23, 25 feet. Oh, wow. That's like, it's like going up into the Bay of Fundy, too, uh, along our main coast. So what they've done, and if you just take a look down here along the bottom of this boat, it has a long running keel. We've seen that, a good tracking keel for when she's under sail. And then on either side, there are bilge keels. And the concept there is that when the tide goes out, the boat will just settle down and settle right down on the mud flat and sit there. And the fun thing about that, it has a practical side too. Imagine um, it's that time of year, you've been sailing for a while, you want to clean the bottom of your boat. You just haul it into the, to the beach, it's sort of like half tide, let it, let it bottom out, let the tide drain out. You hop over the side, scrub down the bottom, just standing on the bottom. So it's a pretty neat design and an interesting concept. I think some people would look at this and say, oh, there's an awful lot of drag down there. Uh, there's a lot of wetted surface. Uh, but she's not designed to be a racehorse. She's designed to be uh, a really sturdy boat in the North Sea, the English Channel, imagine that, yep. the Irish Sea. You have to know this boat sailed over on her own bottom from England, so she's already been transatlantic. Sea tested. She's even made special trips down to the Bahamas from the coast up here, so wow. this boat is well traveled. What a great boat to, to take your family on and teach them how to sail and how to be happy and comfortable uh, on the boat and safe, especially. A very safe boat. So as we're down here looking, uh, notice the pr uh, prop. We always like to look at propellers down here. This is a big three-bladed prop. Appears to be in good shape. There's no dings in it. Doesn't look like it's hit uh, anything in particular. It's got a, a little tired zinc on the shaft. We probably want to change that at some point. And uh, uh, she's, she's uh, good. Now, that's going to offer a fair amount of drag. You know, we all like these folding propellers. But this boat, the owner tells me, is happy doing five knots, six knots on occasion. And he said it even pumping up higher than that. Um, <coughs> and. Uh, She's probably a good little coastal cruiser, happily in, in a light breeze, maybe doing four, four and a half knots. And that's just fine, because you're not trying to set a, uh, a record or be a speed demon. A little tie, this little line right here, this little piece right here is an interesting thing. Uh, what people will do is they'll put an extra line on here. In the event you should happen to lose your rudder, this would be a safety line to catch your rudder. You've got a great run on this boat. Plus you've got the two bilge keels, which are going to make this boat track like it's on on, on railroad tracks. Uh, so you're not going to need too much of this. This is probably more than enough. It's also well protected from grounding by the shoe down here, uh, the, whole, the whole length of this. So this, if this should happen to run aground, uh, this part's going to be up and safe. Everything has been working for 52 years. It's still here. She's solid as can be. 
it's it's really an interesting vote. She sort of gets it gives you the feeling she's sort of stubby or sort of like a little bulldog. And 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 I think that's a, a good way to think of this boat is a is a little bulldog of a boat. I've seen pictures from the boats uh, sailing and the way they handle the sea. It's it. You get the feeling it's very solid. It's not being danced around. It's not a light boat. This is uh, about 9,000 pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, and about 4,000 pounds in ballast, in lead, encapsulated ballast in her keel, in the main keel. She's really kind of pretty in her own little happy way. They might refer to that as a spoon bow, just sort of a, that, that shape. They gave her as much waterline length as they could. And the English are very rugged people, they're, and, they're, and they're old seafarers from way back. So they would find this really appealing to climb into this 28 footer with four kids and mom and dad and probably aunt sally and grandma <laughs> and go sailing but they, they could probably fit them all into this 28 foot uh, uh, boat the waterline is 24 feet this is a boat that's going to take you anywhere you want to go <laughs> offshore so one of the first questions people always like to ask is well is this a blue water boat we have proof that it is a blue water boat she's here came over on her own bottom so let's take a look Top sides, what do you say? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Look at this. <laughs> is this something? This is pretty cool. This is so, I don't know, it's just so British, so English, the way they do things. It's so different than um, American layouts and American designs. I am as comfortable as a bug in a rug right here. I'm really, look at this. It's like, uh, I don't know, sitting in the back of a convertible, you know? And uh, these combings are huge. It's all molded in, and uh, it's got a little non-skid on it. This particular boat, you know, it's been around for a while, so some of the non-skids have been touched up with paint and so forth. I've got engine controls right in front of me here, so I can see that easily. And this is my steering wheel right here, this baby. This drives that little rudder we got down there. No one has tiller envy here. No envy. tiller envy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if there were a huge rudder down there, you'd want a, a tiller that went another foot out there so you could, you know, so you can actually control it. There's a little, a little gizmo right here, which I haven't seen in a long time, really old school. This is um, set up with a line that runs through here and there's a stopper nut right on the tiller. Yep. And the concept here is if you're sailing by yourself and, the, and you're steering a little bit, you want to do, you want to walk away, go down, use the head, cook a meal, maybe a can of Dindy more if you happen to have any. You just tighten this right up and this line, the other end, would just be sitting over here somewhere. So that tiller's not going anywhere. You can just loosen that up and suddenly you can move the whole tiller. Isn't that cool? Pretty neat. It's a cool little device, isn't it? Uh, and perfect for a boat this size. The Brits really know how to do it. They've been sailing a long time, haven't they? <laughs> they actually ruled the oceans <laughs> for for a lot of years. And there's a little nubbin on here too. I can only imagine. I think that goes to a uh, an autopilot arm. Yes, it is. Here's the other fitting for it up here. So this would probably be a uh, uh, an autopilot. I just can't believe again. This is sort of like the Pacific Sea craft that we looked at up in the woods. Uh, and I'm surprised at how big it seems. Now, right behind me <clears throat> uh, is a traveler uh, with a couple of stops on it. And uh, so you can set that traveler right where you want. This is for the main sheet, for the main sail. Now, this isn't very big, but we're not on a very big boat. So uh, your main sheet's going to come down here, a four-part four uh, tackle with a, um, maybe like a Harkin style um, stop for it that you can just sit here and s control your mainsail all day long. A nice big uh, center cleat right here. This is really massive and oversized, but you can put big lines around that. And they do a lot of things over in England about how they moor their boats in uh, heavy tidal areas. So this may be stronger than the average because they may want to keep the boat running just in one line. A nice strong push pit here, all stainless, bolted down to the deck. Uh, right down here on the port side, you've got uh, engine controls, forward and reverse gear and your throttle up here. And then there's a, a kill button for the engine. Stop the diesel. Let's just see what we have in here. You think there's a quarter worth here? Oh, we've got, look at, nice little finished wood inside. Some lines and gear and all the stuff you need to store away. But just a nice small locker. Look at the nice countersink right here on this wood. This countersink is gonna match up to the rim on the seat itself. Uh, this has got a little bit of a rubber gasketing to it, so it's going to keep it pretty watertight. Same thing on this side, just more storage, get a place for all your miscellaneous stuff. Uh, 
This looks like somebody's CD collection down there. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Probably some British pop. Could be some British pop rock. <laughs> That's entirely possible, Randy. And look at that. Wow, that's sweet. Is that is that as nice as can be? What year is this? Uh, the motor was installed in 2004. It runs runs like a champ. The owner says, no problems. I can see the shaft down here, and uh, it's nice and bright. The transmission looks good. Not not a lot loaded with a lot of rust or anything. Uh, the hull sides and the build sides you see are are grayed with age, but but. Uh, uh, it smells good too. That's the captain aftershave. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, Randy, let's take a little walk forward here. Uh, actually, this feels pretty secure up here. The decks are narrow. Again, going back to the concept of probably building as much living space into this boat as they could uh, for the uh, English families. Nice handrails again. Nice non-skid here, all molded in. Big bollard, this guy. Kind of matches the one in the stern, doesn't it? That big T uh, yeah. shape. Yep. <clears throat> it's really designed to take a big line. Uh, you got a CQR. This looks like about a, oh, a 25 pound CQR and a small Danforth on the port side. And I love this one. This uh, windlass here. This is really, people I'm talking about old school. This looks like it came off a uh, I don't know, a square rigger of some sort. I could see that on a Johnny Depp boat. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, one of the pirate movies you yeah. made. But you have heard of me. Exactly, and it's, it's all ratchet driven. You put a handle in here and you just ratchet that thing up and down. And here's the keeper to keep anchor from uh, running. This piece is a, a tensioner and you can just, by tightening this up, it'll put tension on this drum in the center to keep the whole thing from spinning out too fast when you let the chain out. We've got a nice uh, fitted fiberglass hatch with a translucent patch in the middle. This is just a, a section that has no gel coat in it and it will let light into that forward cabin below it. We come upon our old friend the tabernacle and we've talked about this before. This is really a good tabernacle setup. There's a bolt that pins through the bottom of the mast and one at the top too. There's two, there'll be two pins that'll go through that. When you decide to go through the uh, canals of England, you just lower this mast down. Or you want to go to the canals of France, lower the mast down right here, and it just pivots right down. And uh, you can set it up on deck. Now, another Johnny Depp item here for you. Oh yeah? Yep. The rat lines here, these, these pieces here uh, are attached, these pieces of wood are attached to, to the shrouds on one side of the boat and they allow a crew member to climb up and uh, look out for coral heads, icebergs, and you could probably jump off one of those. I bet there isn't, there, there's been more than one kid that's taken a leap off those things um, and you, you'd get tested. The, who'd go the highest, Robbie, right? If we get back here, they've got a, a couple of little uh, uh, breakwaters here molded in either side of the cabin top. What do you think? I think we've seen enough up here. You want to take a look below? Yeah, I'm really curious. Okay. Oh, what does this say right here? This says... Mind the step. <laughs> good, good thing. Uh, good, they always have good little things like that. I think, you know who said that first? No. Shakespeare. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So I've got like six, two, six, three worth of headroom right now. And uh, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. We like this. Come on down and take a look and, and see what you think yourself. We're down here in the in the uh, kind of galley nav area. Nicely set up little sink there, and it has its own hand pump right here. This is just a hand pump sink, and then put the cover back on, and you got a good place to make sandwiches or to uh, uh, cook your meal. Some shepherd's now, pie. Shepherd's pie would be good. Uh, what about steak and kidney? Don't think it was steak <laughs> and kidney. This it has a two burner stove just sitting right here right now. Uh, originally there was something that sat on these little gimbal swings right here on either side of the stove. And the cover comes down so you've got a place to, you know, make sandwiches and so forth. And just set it, you know, right down here for the moment. And then you can sit on this, this little step down here and uh, cook while you're underway. It's kind of convenient, huh? Yeah. You sit here and cook your meal. We got the pan here, and then we just need something to put in the pan. And what what did I find here? This boat is <laughs> this boat is 
Just like all the votes we've seen recently. What it is seems it? like a very strange coincidence. <clears throat> this is Denny Moore. They want to know about something? This has no preservatives in it. And then somebody says, well, what am I going to wash that Denny Moore down with? You haul out. The magic bubbles. PB stuff. PB special. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, this might be a, a, a perfect application for your favorite thing. Oh, a C-swing. Yes. We love those C-swings. I'd mount it right up here. Probably move this little thing because uh, I'd put my toothpaste someplace else uh, and uh, be a great place for a C-swing. And inside, uh, you've got a quick peek hatch right here. And by that, I mean, you can just, you know, you look down there, you smell something happening. Maybe a, every once in a while a belt will come loose on an engine or something will happen. And uh, you want to be able to reach down and get it. And I know I can probably grab the uh, oil dipstick from there as well. Basically, that's a good, strong, uh, clean looking hull down there. And you can see the top of the lead. See the lead sitting down there? That's the lead that's been poured into the hole, just under that hose. There you go, check that out now. Now imagine I could open the hatch in the cockpit and I would have that entire engine sitting in my lap. Is that that's pretty, pretty good? Great. Yeah, that's about as good as we've seen for access. It, it really is. Look at the size. This is actually a nice size uh, chart table. Lots of room here to navigate, navigate with. And <laughs> We don't, what you call it, navigating, isn't that the, the proper terminology? When I do it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a quarter berth under here too, which has obviously become storage area for the boat. And I think this family has uh, four people in it, so they've used the two four berths in the mid cabin and the two berths forward. But uh, this is a good size quarter berth under here, uh, and it goes way back in. But lots of lots of gear and sailing gear and life harnesses. We got a good handholds here. See, I got good, I can. That's, that's a solid piece there that's going to keep me... I can move around the whole boat hanging on to that. It's quite nice. We have a much, a really nice sized berth here, and that can be longer because your feet could actually go into that hole back there. So I don't know, there may be a cushion to take that up. Plus there's storage outboard of all this, and, and the little open lockers. That will jam right in there, look nice and tight. And over here is a, this is the, an old Cestral, uh, I think it's called a Cestral Compass. This actually lives up on a similar mount up on the cabin top. And the nice thing about these old compasses is, uh, first of all, you could see it from anywhere in the cockpit. And number two, if you were taking bearings, you look right over the top of the compass and you could just, you know, look right at the landmass or the lighthouse that you're trying to figure out where it is. You see many of those on a boat. Uh, that's to pipe, pipe the captain aboard. And, um, I didn't get when, that. When would you use Nobody that? blew that when I came aboard. I don't know why. Uh, when would you blow that? Uh, when you want to get somebody's attention. Okay. Good thing to do. Uh, big opening, long hatch, a lot of air coming in there, and one on the other side as well. This right now, just this way, makes for a pretty nice big single. I think we need the measuring stick. Okay. Well, let's give this a try. Whoa! Ah, oh, I'd be sleeping the other way actually, so it's a little wider at the other end. But, and this bunk can be pulled out. This moment in all these episodes of ours, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be lying down because it's just get too comfortable. Well, this, this sells me. Uh, this is great. Yeah. Okay. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. Good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. Let's take a look forward. Now this is, here's a hanging locker on your port side right here. Uh, all open. A lot of times they just put a little canvas across that to, uh, just keep things from flying out of there. Uh, and then forward, there's a nice V berth, good sized berth on either side. And then there's a, the base for the big sort of Samson post there coming down for that great big uh, mooring bit we saw forward. Remember how we said that they really take a lot of care to make certain that uh, these boats are moored carefully yep. uh, in those rivers. Um, this door closes. And it, it bolts there on the left hand, uh, right hand side as oh, you look yeah. at the door. And there's the head. So you have total privacy. You've got stand up headroom. You've got headroom right where you are, Rand, eh? And you're peeking over the top, I can see. Yep. <laughs> that particular head's all been rebuilt, so it's ready to function. A little fishing pole here with a little fly, fly, uh, fly rod attached to it. You see that big fish going by? You get out there and give it a couple. Yeah. Couple Did you ever flips. catch anything off the PB? Seaweed mostly, <laughs> a lot of seaweed. Ooh.
We just had a really fun trip up to Poland, Maine. We don't always get to meet all the owners of these boats today. We met a terrific guy. And this fellow owns a uh, 1969 Kovic Sea Roamer 28 foot uh, sloop with three keels, three. <laughs> Unbelievable. There's one great long one there to give you good traction anywhere you're going and two other stabilizing pieces which will give you a great motion in a sea and will also allow you to actually beach the thing. As you can see this spot right behind me, there's a, a place you could pull that right up on this little sandy uh, mud flat right here and sit there for the night. The fun thing about the boat, it's, it's 50 years old, so it's not perfect. Uh, it's well worn, well used, well loved. And I see this boat as a perfect uh, little starter boat for a family with a couple of young children maybe who uh, don't want to go racing. They can just get on the boat and go for a picnic. And when they pass a little beach, they say, Pop, let's go swimming. They turn that boat right into the beach and go parking. It's just kind of fun to see. Uh, and imagine, you know, young family, maybe even learning to sail. Maybe dad and mom haven't sailed that much. Uh, you could sail this boat and not get into any trouble. And I also want to mention too that there's a, uh, there's a gentleman in England, and I, and I think this would be fun if, if a lot of our viewers would take a minute and look up Kipper Tails. He's found one of these in the backwaters of uh, southwestern England, and he's cleaned it up and he's fixed it, and he puts on his foul weather gear and his safety equipment, and he gets in there and he hangs onto that little tiller and he takes the boat out and he motors around the estuary wherever he is and he has a great time with it. And I think if you watched him, he'd get a real kick out of hearing from some of Captain Q's viewers. You know I have a question. You always have a question? I'm ready for you today. How would the Captain Q rate this neat little boat? She gets kind of a high rating because, uh, n not for me so much, but for the people that might really be perfect for this boat. I think that little family, or maybe even a single hander, just a guy that wants to have a boat to go plunk around in. She's been a transatlantic, Randy. I, we can't deny that. No, legitimate blue water. That. So she's serious blue water. I think we've got to give her, and this is, I don't know, I've got to give her a solid 10 to start with, right? Yep. Okay. If it floats, it gets a 10. And I'm going to give it eight more on top of that. This is going to 18. It's going to be perfect for that family. And they'll probably think it's a 25 when they get it. You know, they'll have a good time. <laughs> If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. We're having too good a time doing these things, so uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>